<laughs> so I've been talking a lot about street photography lately, so I decided to pack my bag, take you with me, head to the street and tell you five tips that will make you a good street photographer as a beginner. So if you are thinking about heading out to the street and starting photography as a street photographer, just hang on. I'm gonna tell you the things that will get you at least started. editing this video I just found out that the audio on the first tip is trash so I'm gonna have to record it again right here and the first tip is why is street photography good for beginners well first of all you learn through failure and you're gonna fail a lot I know that doesn't sound encouraging but it should be because you get a whole lot of shots, you should be taking a whole lot of shots, you're gonna start learning to see all kind of different things, you're gonna start seeing things differently. That's the most important part because you're gonna start seeing artistically, you're gonna start, start seeing the way you would want others to see, I don't know, or the camera see, you know, well, you start taking pictures that you really wanna take. So you just go out there, take a hell of a lot of shots, and you just go with the flow. Now also one thing why it is good to start with street photography is that you have a lot of subjects there. You have to adapt yourself taking pictures of those subjects and it's not like, it's not gonna be easy, but it's easier to take photos of people and strangers than trying to vlog in public because that is that is still pretty it's even for me it's pretty uh, i don't know it's it's feel it feels weird but still taking photos you can take it from a distance etc so it's an easy way to start photography now tip number two, the gear and the settings. Well, if you are a beginner photographer, the best gear you can go with is a small time camera like a Fu Fujifilm. I did a video about a Fujifilm camera that is, in my opinion, perfect for street photography. Go check out that video. But it doesn't matter what kind of camera you use, you still gotta get used to the fact that you are around people who you don't know and you gotta respect those people with that camera. Now for lenses, what kind of lenses I like to use? I like to use prime lenses. I got my 85 almost every time on my EOS R85 f1.8 and that is a perfect lens for me at least for street photography. In Finland people are really conservative, they like their own space so I like to keep my distance. I don't want to bother anyone with my camera too much and I'm getting close enough that they see that I'm taking a picture and if they don't like it they can tell me. Now most people prefer a 35, a 24 getting that kind of bigger picture in the streets so there's nothing wrong with that and those are perfectly good lenses and I highly suggest trying them out but that means that you have to get closer to people if you want to take shots with people in them. Now the settings, the settings that I like to use, aperture priority. That's basically it. I trust my gear that it knows how to, you know, do the other settings when I want that depth of field. If I want to use 1.8, if I want to use 2.8, then I know that my gear, my camera adjusts the other settings to my liking and it doesn't blow out or underexpose those pictures. Aperture priority is a good way to go. That's what I used in the future film and that's what I'm using with the Canon. Sometimes I go manual. It depends totally on the situation, of course, but I highly suggest starting with the aperture priority 
and after that go into manual if you want you know longer shutter speeds etc now the third thing is to visualize just look around your surroundings check out places now when you're on the streets it's a lot about moving it's a lot about you know staying still it's it's a lot about both if you want to take pictures of people you want to get them into the frame you want you found the perfect spot and you feel like hey this would be perfect if a person would walk past by then it's waiting sometimes you have to just move around a lot to there are people coming by a lot of chaos so you're just taking shots and feeling like okay this is gonna something's gonna work so there's a lot of moving there's a lot of staying still and yeah visualize and look around your surroundings. Now the location doesn't matter at all. If you think about it, I live in central Finland and this is quite a small town. There is this one road that is going through the city center and I just usually walk up and down, find buildings, parking garages and go to the, you know, the top floor taking shots up from down. It, the location doesn't matter. Some places are quieter, some places are more chaotic, but you just gotta find the good things in those places. So it doesn't matter. The place doesn't matter. It's all in your head. It's all about what you wanna find, what kind of shots you wanna take. Of course, if you are thinking about taking a shot of, you know, the Empire State Building, that isn't street photography. That's a bucket shot. So now the fourth thing is remember the rules. Just kidding, there isn't any rules in street photography. Uh, the fourth thing is there is no such thing as perfection. Now think about it, you're taking pictures of life, you're taking pictures of movement, you're using different kind of lenses. You might be using a manual lens because you think that's a perfect lens for that situation. And when you go to post editing, you realize that it is out of focus. But the facial expression on that human's face, on that human being's face, <laughs> human being's face, is just perfect so it doesn't matter if it's a little bit of out of focus you're not pursuing for perfection you are trying to find perfections and imperfections you are taking shots you're taking stories as they are show the fifth and the last thing is don't delete any photos don't do that because the small screen doesn't show you everything that you need to see you take them in post editing you might get a perfectly fine a perfectly good story a perfectly good picture of a picture that didn't look good when you took it you can crop it in you can change the view you can just see it in a different way in post editing so don't delete any photos when you've taken them just take them home look at them in a bigger screen think about it what you can do with that picture that is the five tips on how to become a great street photographer at least start as a beginner in street photography that doesn't actually you don't get to be a great street photographer you're just practicing it all the time me included I like, I love street photography. I am not perfect at it and I'm learning all the time. Now, the next bonus tip is that just keep your camera as an everyday carry. Take it along with you everywhere where you go. Take those photos, walk down those streets. Just once you might decide that, hey, I'm not gonna take the bus, I'm gonna walk home. So there is a chance to have a camera with you anywhere you go you can take even shots from the bus or inside the bus so but in the long term you're gonna start seeing things differently you're gonna start seeing the world differently and that is a blessing not a curse you are just everywhere you're going you're looking at a shot that you could have taken that's why you gotta have your camera with you because you're gonna regret it sooner or later so in this case a thousand crappy photos makes good photos. You know what I'm saying? Uh, taking a thousand, yeah, whatever. But pick up the camera, head down the streets, start taking some photos. Remember to like, subscribe, because that helps out a small time creator like me a lot. And I'll be seeing you on the next one. What?